So you're interested in being a hacker. That's what today's video is all about. We're gonna tell you guys how you can be a hacker. Stay tuned. Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions. And if you guys have watched our previous video where we kind of define what hacking is and what a hacker is, today we're gonna tell you about how you can be a hacker, which is really exciting because many people are always looking to get into hacking or just try to understand a little bit more about that side of the industry. People often think that hacking or being a hacker is a bad thing. However, there are ethical hackers or white hat hackers who do really amazing things. So that's what today's video is all about, is introducing you guys to hacking at an ethical level and helping you learn some of these different tools, concepts, and technologies so that you can go down that path. Before we get into that, today's episode is sponsored by Cybrary. Cybrary offers amazing IT training courses specifically geared towards cybersecurity. So if you guys really wanna get in depth and learn some of the different tools and technologies that can help you become an ethical hacker, I strongly suggest using Cybrary. Check out the link in the description below and use that coupon code ITCQ50 to save 50% off your premium membership. To really help lay down the foundations of being a hacker, Understanding the thought process of how a hacker works and operates is going to be one of the greatest areas in this episode that will help you really kind of get those foundational skills and really that greater understanding. And what do we mean by thinking like a hacker, what that thought process is? To think like a hacker, you guys have to think outside the box. It's manipulating everything, manipulating systems, applications, and different tools, and people even. And thinking outside the box on how different processes and applications work is going to be one of those things that sets you apart. To give you a better understanding of the thought process and thinking outside the boxes, we could take this Amazon Echo Dot here, for instance. We know what the purpose of this Echo Dot is. It does a lot of great things with Alexa. You could talk to it and buy things through it and schedule things and get the weather and you can play music through it. But what else can you do with this? What can you do with this Echo Dot that it's not intended to do? Is there a way that you can manipulate this so you can always record and hear and listen to things around you and then play those back later? Is there a way that you could set this up in other areas and have it listening and then sending that information to you? What other different ways can you think of that you could hack this Echo Dot? That is kind of the thought process behind a hacker, is always thinking of different opportunities to manipulate something or to have different programs, applications, and even hardware do things that they're not necessarily intended to do. So now that we've talked about thinking like a hacker, what are the fundamentals of hacking that you should know about? For the purpose of this video, we're gonna define three different types of hacking. And please keep in mind, there are definitely multiple different aspects that you can look at hacking, ways to hack. But defining these top three fundamental areas within hacking can greatly help you get a better concept of what becoming a hacker is. So the three top areas within hacking are going to be your operations, application, and people. So let's get into that. So starting this off, we're gonna talk about operations hacking. And when we talk about operations hacking, we're talking about servers and networks, computers, systems, and different devices. And of course, hacking a Gibson, dating myself. Make sure you guys Google that if you don't know what it is. So defining operations hacking is really trying to define the basic fundamentals of IT because you really have to have a great understanding of operating systems like Linux, Windows operating systems, Mac OS, Android devices, and Apple iOS devices as well. Of course, having a great fundamental knowledge of how networking works, so layers, VLANs, how different switches work and operate, that's going to be something, again, that greatly helps lay those foundations and those fundamentals are gonna greatly help you in understanding how hacking works. Then there's also scripting, understanding PowerShell and Bash and Python. Those are gonna be some great foundational scripting languages that can help during your hacking process. To sum this section up, really understanding the fundamentals behind basic technology is going to be something that can greatly help as you're going through your thought process, as you're going through your learning process and eventually becoming a hacker. You can't really hack a system or hack an application or hack anything for that matter without really having that fundamental knowledge of how technology works. Now, yes, you can go through different guides and things like that, and you can work your way through on hacking a system. But however, if you really wanna become a true hacker, 
understanding the fundamentals behind the technologies that you're trying to hack is going to be the core concept. Those are the core fundamentals that you need. And next on the list as we're going into application hacking is learn to code. Yeah, that's right. You guys have to learn to code if you want to be an application hacker. So whether it's web applications or system applications or even programs, understanding the basic fundamentals behind some of these different programming languages is something that's going to be greatly helpful to you. And yes, even learning the fundamentals behind operating systems is going to be something that greatly helps you. You need to understand how different applications interact with different operating systems. So it's really important that you guys at least have some of the fundamental knowledge of how these different operating systems listed here will work for you. And of course, the meat of the bones here is learning programming languages. Having the fundamental knowledge behind these following programming languages will greatly help you. HTML, CSS, PHP, Java, JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, Perl, Python, these are some of the most widely used programming languages in the world today. So really understanding how some of these work and you can pick and choose on which ones you really want to dive into. You don't necessarily have to be an expert in any of these, but really kind of having just that basic entry level point of view on how some of these programming languages work to get your foot in the door, to get to understand how different hacking processes work. These programming languages are going to be the ones that you might want to look into and you could again, and again, you can look into these a little bit further and you can really dive deep into something like Python, for instance. And that, that programming language right there can help you in many different aspects of the IT world outside of learning how to hack. And of course, just emphasizing learning the fundamentals of technology is always going to be something that's going to greatly help you if you're really looking to become a hacker. Sometimes you want to have a lot of knowledge in many different aspects of this field to become a really good hacker. And that doesn't mean that you can't really focus in on one specific area because you definitely can and there's nothing wrong with that. So just keep in mind that you do have many options when it comes to becoming a hacker. And the last thing on our list is people hacking, more commonly known as social engineering. There's a lot at play when it comes to social engineering and learning the fundamentals behind programming languages or just IT in general is gonna be something that can greatly help you down that path. It's really the art of manipulating people and getting them to believe things that they normally shouldn't believe, right? Right? And actually using some of the tools that you would learn from the basics of IT or programming languages as something that can help that process of social engineering somebody. There are times where you have actually have to do these hacks in person. So whether you are pretending to be somebody that you're not, or you are tailgating somebody to get into access to a building that you shouldn't normally access. Now, of course, there are many different aspects of social engineering that you should be looking into because that is a large kind of umbrella that covers the hacking world. And again, the art of manipulation is going to be one thing that is going to really set you apart from other hackers. Now, it's really important that I emphasize the title of this following slide, Buyer Beware. These are actually free applications that you can download to help understand and learn the hacking process. These applications are Metasploit, Nmap, Wireshark, Social Engineering Toolkit, and John the Ripper. This is just naming a few of the different applications that you can use to help understand the hacking process. And of course, it's really important to emphasize this. Learning the tools and the applications that we just mentioned does not make you a hacker. In fact, this would make you more of a script kitty, and this is kind of looked down upon in the hacking world. Yes, you can go online and you can look up tutorials on how Metasploit works and how to actually do some really low level hacks or sometimes even more high level hacks. However, this just makes you a script kitty. And this is looked down upon in the hacking world. You don't want to be known as a script kitty who just utilizes pre-built scripts without knowing how they actually work. So when we talked earlier in this video about learning the fundamentals, it's really important to know that if you're going to be using some of these applications, you should actually have a good understanding of what they are actually doing. So understanding the processes that go behind the different applications built within Metasploit is going to be something that sets you apart from a hacker and a script kitty. So make sure you guys take special note of that. We don't want you guys to go out and think that you can understand and master Metasploit without actually understanding and mastering the fundamentals behind how Metasploit works. And if you guys are really looking to dive deep into understanding how to be a hacker, I strongly suggest that you guys go check out the courses over at Cybrary. They have courses for penetration testing, ethical hacking, and even application type of hacking as well. And again, those courses are designed specifically for these types of roles in the IT world. You guys can watch these courses for absolutely free, but if you really wanna get hands-on, you can join their premium membership over there. And if you guys use the coupon code ITCQ50, you can save 50% off that premium membership, 
which gets you access to their practice labs and their virtual labs as well. So it makes it much easier for you to follow along. So that's all that I got for you guys in today's video. I hope you appreciate it and found some use out of it. If you're looking for more information, please hit me up in the comments below and let me know what you're looking to see. As always, take it easy.